since 2003. This is the Sports Source, East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Brought to you by Junk Be Gone and the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Sports Source. Happy to have you joining us here in the Paper Be Gone studios. We have a new studio coming soon as we celebrate our 20th year. That whole thing kicks off uh, basically late July and August, so we look forward to that. Thank Paper Be Gone for being a big part of that. Thank Junk Be Gone for being a big part of that. Matter of fact, before I tell you what's in today's show, let me tell you about more about Junk Be Gone. Uh, they're bringing you this first segment today, and if you need to get junk out of your house, the stuff that you just don't use anymore, the stuff that's too much of a hassle to drive to the dump, call Junk Be Gone. That's what I do. They bring a dumpster, you fill it, or they can fill it, and then they take it away. It's easy as can be. Easy as can be. Ah, a little pun there. Junkbegone.biz to learn more. These folks uh, make your life easier. I swear they do. Check them out. Let it be part of your spring cleaning uh, every year. Junk be gone. All right. Uh, let's welcome in the panel. we got a lot to cover today. Uh, first person to introduce right here, new father. Well, father, new father for the third time. Let's put it <laughs> that right. way. Josh Ward, congratulations. Um, daughter this time, so two little boys and a little girl. Yep, Owen and Max and dad as well have dropped in the pecking order. So uh, And the daughter's name? No, uh, Nora. She is, uh, she is at the top now. <laughs> already, already running the house. Thank Congratulations. You. You're also, uh, now that your wife gave birth to your daughter, you're giving birth to a new television, a new uh, radio show tomorrow on 99.1 The Sports Animal. You have a new host. Yeah, Jason Swain. Can't wait to start uh, Josh and Swain tomorrow, Monday, 12 to 3. So same time slot. I've been doing Sports 180, but uh, excited to welcome the VFL, Jason Swain, to the show and the station. New co-host. Good luck. I'm sure that show will do very well. Thank you. Uh, he's built a good audience for himself, and of course, everybody's known you. You know, John Ward's grandson. Uh, been over there for 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> Getting about that. John, uh, Josh, thanks for being here. Keep telling people. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh, also from 99.1 The Sports Animal, we have Jimmy Himes right here. Jimmy from Sports Talk. You can hear him Monday through Friday, 3 to 7. Jimmy, thanks for being with us. Thank you. And I haven't reached Josh's status. I don't have my <laughs> show in the name. Not up there. The <laughs> Maybe one go. of these days. <laughs> yeah. And right down there from The Athletic, you can find him at theathletic.com. We have David Oven. David, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. And next to you, Chuck Cavallar, so you can find basically any street corner in Knoxville. <laughs> you can find him just sandwich board with a <laughs> megaphone, shouting his views. Longtime sports writer, longtime member of this panel. Chuck, thanks for being here. Uh, great to be here, John. Okay, uh, spring practice is uh, just about halfway done. It's amazing. When you don't have spring break in the middle of it, it goes pretty quick. Uh, so you're about halfway through. Tennessee had their first scrimmage yesterday. And just want to get some reaction because this week I was kind of thinking, there's a lot of stuff that we see every year that we kind of throw out there. And I just want to know how much stock do we put in that? We got that throughout the show. There's some things that I've said on the show that we're going to do a segment later. I've said that. We all kind of nod and agree, but is it true? So that's kind of where I want to take this. Uh, let's talk about some of the things Josh Heifel said yesterday about this scrimmage. And uh, you can take a look here. Let's start with the quarterbacks, as reported by Go Vols 24-7. Heupel said, I thought Hendon Hooker did a good job throughout the course of the day, made some really nice decisions inside of the pocket, getting through his progression in a really good way and being able to drop the football off. I thought Joe Milton did some really positive things, was able to extend some drives and make some plays. Okay, fine, sounds good. Um, two weeks ago, we discussed the fact that since you had no contact uh, as your lay of the land, which I understand, you don't want to get one of those guys hurt, but since you had that going, you didn't know really what Hooker could do when the bullets were flying. You didn't know how Milton would react when the bullets were flying. Knowing that, how much stock do you put in how good they look right now? Because we've seen these guys, Hooker seems to be a little bit better mm -hmm. when it's live action. Milton, maybe not as accurate in live action. Do you put a lot of faith in the fact that, man, they look good in the first scrimmage? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't put a lot in it. There was something that the quarterback's coach, Joey Halsley, said the other day that I'd, I'd put a little more stock in this. He said that with Hooker, he said he is reading defenses quicker and that he's able to move the secondary a little bit with his eyes. So he's improved in that regard. But until you go live bullets, until you're tackling the quarterbacks, as you've said it, it was proven last year, you really didn't get a great read on it. So I don't put a lot of stock in that right now. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's not, you know, 
a lot you're going to see in the spring. I think you saw plenty in the fall. For whatever it's worth, I've had two SEC coaches in the last month tell me they think Hooker's the best offensive player in the league, which I was actually oh. surprised to hear. I think that's, no, no, Alabama, Hooker, but that says a lot about <laughs> the system as yeah, well. I mean, I think cause so. you could say that about Drew Locke when he was in the league. And <laughs> the system. Yeah, but it's interesting to see. I mean, I think ultimately, you know, what you do in the fall – just matters uh, so much more. And even in the spring, even if you're playing in the spring game and all those things, I mean, how much have we seen, you know, it, 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 this is about learning and improving and all that stuff. I just don't think you can take a whole lot from any of it. And it's easy to think this like a year ago. Think how much things have progressed in that year and, and with the, a, a lot of returning players on offense as a whole. So you would expect that kind of improvement, right? Yep. And Milton, we've, we've, we've heard a good practice player, right? Yep. That never really was the problem. It was overthrows during the game, and, and I kept saying, have him drop back two or three more yards or something, or some kind of adjustment. But, I mean, that's about what you would expect to hear. Yeah, I think the spring is just more valuable for figuring out who you got, what do you got, not really how great guys are, but right. how is that pecking order going to sort out? Because you can, you can compare guys to what you got on your roster, but compare them to what they're going to look like, you know, when the seats are full and, uh, you know, the lights are on and the music's pumping. Eh. You know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a season for hype. I mean, yeah. Tennessee's not going to have the uh, – <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Tennessee's not going to have the uh, spring game this year, so you're not going – they're going to have their own spring show, but the SEC mm -hmm. Network and ESPN, they're going to be covering all of the SEC spring games. And whichever one you tune into, it's going to be, oh, wow, this guy's got to be incredible. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, wait till we get to fall. <laughs> I don't think this Vanderbilt recruit's going to be incredible. Uh, Josh, let me start with you on this next one. Let's talk – uh, and it kind of goes the same way, just on the opposite side. Defense. Let's talk about what uh, Josh Heupel said about the defense. In some of the competitive situations, I thought the defense did a good job getting off the field. When we were driving the football, there were a couple of third down situations where they were able to make a stop, get off the field, or maybe force a field goal in four-minute drill. The ones that uh, did a nice job of getting off the field. I thought a day ago in our third down set, the defense did a really nice job of affecting and collapsing the quarterback. They won some one-on-one -on -one situations. Today at times that showed up as well. That's an, emphasis, uh, that's an emphasis for us and something we are constantly having to grow in. We've got to be able to affect the quarterback with pressure, but you've also got to be able to do it with a four-man rush. All right, so last year, you had, that sounds terrific. Yeah. I mean, getting <laughs> off the field on third down, mm -hmm. yeah. that was Tennessee's big bugaboo last year. But how many times last year was it a mobile quarterback who gave Tennessee trouble on that third down? And without guys being able to do all that they can do right now, how much can you put in? How much stock do you put in? Ooh, the defense is now making stops on third down. Right. Uh, I, I think we're going to have a similar, maybe the same reaction to comments on the quarterback position and the offense. You've seen what Hendon Hooker can do. And then on Saturdays, you've seen what Joe Milton to this point can't do. And with the defense, we're going to go into the fall with some of the same questions. Okay, they probably can create pressure. They're really good at getting tackles for loss last year, but not good enough of getting stops when they needed to as the season went along. So we're still going to be asking the same personnel questions. Can you, can you find enough pass rushers against those type quarterbacks that you're going to face in the SEC? So what you hear is good, but it doesn't answer the questions that won't be answered until September. Agreed. Everybody agree? For the most part, I mean, I just think up front you got to feel pretty good, but in the secondary, you just, you know, you're sort of waiting, and you're like, well, you know, you got to get these corners healthy, yeah. see if your 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 safeties continue to get better. But I, I think up front, you, you still ultimately feel good. You do, but I, do, I still think you're going to need more pass rush than you had last well, year. Your secondary, oh, yeah. if your secondary exactly. has more questions, then you're going to have to make up for that somewhere. Well, you yeah, I, I think in theory you're bringing enough guys back that you would feel good about it. You look at Byron Young, you look at Tyron, you, 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 say, you say, okay. These guys showed enough. You, you feel pretty good about yep. they should be better. You don't have the knucklehead factor with either of those guys. You feel like, okay, we, we feel good about that front seven and that pass rush, and it's just a matter of making it reality. I feel good about maybe the front four holding their ground, but I don't hadn't really seen enough to know that they're going to affect the quarterback with just the front four of you. I mean, I haven't. And the secondary, you've got so much turnover there, and to me that was one of the most disappointing position groups on the team. I mean, that, I don't think they could have covered me. <laughs> you, you need to have one of the freshmen uh, evolve as a pass rusher. Yeah. You might, uh, but, but that would really help. Right now there are three that I would identify as this is a pretty decent pass rusher, but they need to get more. In the secondary, they've got four that are injured this yeah. spring, right? They lost two starters. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot to overcome, in particular when I am reminded of what they look like against Purdue. Mm -hmm. Against a guy with 
two bad knees out there. Yeah. Uh, before we go to break, uh, two guys were out yesterday. Number of injuries. Jimmy just alluded to some of the guys in the secondary. Number of injuries this year, which everybody has at this moment. Uh, in the spring, you got the guys who had the offseason surgery that are recovering, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Gerald Mincy, the offensive lineman who transferred in from uh, Florida, he was out yesterday uh, with an ankle injury. He's expected to be back shortly. Latrell Bumpus, however, uh, mm -hmm. out for spring with a knee injury, should be back for the fall, but he will miss the rest of spring practice. Hurt his knee on the first day of spring practice, which that's jinxed. Bad luck right there. All right, uh, when we come back, freshman earning praise, a step forward for team leadership. Let's get these guys' reaction. We'll play a little read and react. I'll read the quote, they'll react. <laughs> we got basketball, baseball, Lady Falls basketball. We got all, everything to cover today. Come on back. <laughs> 